on the XD team. And also with me, who's going to be doing spectacular, wonderful, razzle dazzle, dare I say, intergalactic <laughs> work, is Mr. Talon Wadsworth, mm, our principal I'm... designer of Adobe XD. Jess, how are you? My goodness. And you, you undersold, you understated and undersold yourself by just <laughs> saying you're a designer on the XD team. You are so much more than that, Jess. <laughs> Already with the lovely things, the compliments. I, I think that's so sweet. But today is really going to be focused on your magic talent. And so I have to admit, <laughs> normally I have a good idea of understanding where we're going to go with uh, the show we're doing. Um, today, though, <laughs> it's mostly talent's brainchild. And I'm here for the ride to kind of see uh, the magic that you come up with. Um, I'm not even familiar with the inspiration, though I have it on my list now to do um, and watch. Um, but before we get into that real quick, I do want to give folks a reminder after today's show, we've got a lovely lineup uh, for the rest of the day. So we'll be uh, here from 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific. And at 2.30, please join Andrew and Simone as they do design in the dark and do some wonderful lettering work based off of suggestions from the chat. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll be here today and tomorrow. And with that, let's lot talk about Midnight Gospel, your inspiration, oh, my and goodness. what we're doing today. Yes, yes. And actually, you know, it just resonated with me, the designing in the dark. I I, I, I would I, I want to be on that show. I love designing without anything really in mind when we come into this. But, oh, uh, well, you'll, that, that's you'll whole, get some today. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a little bit of that today, a little bit of that flavor as well. <laughs> uh, Jess is definitely in the dark a little bit. Uh, so uh, if you, you might have seen on the maybe the title card for the show that I was going to be designing today, we're going to we are going to be designing a intergalactic podcasting application. And so let me just tell you about how this happened. <laughs> So uh, I've really been into this uh, amazing show on Netflix called The Midnight Gospel. Uh, it's 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 out there. It's definitely one of the stranger ones. It is actually brought to you by um, the creator of Adventure Time. Uh, Pendleton Ward was involved with this. And um, he has created this show, which is not a kid show, by the way. <laughs> you should not allow. Uh, I see Zilla in the <laughs> chat here. Zilla, you should not allow your kids to watch this. It's... It's definitely not for kids, even though it is an animated show. But this is the one of the most fascinating shows I think I've seen in a while. And, you know, I get really bored with like streaming shows like very quickly. Um, this one, I, I, I just want to see more. And so let me just tell you about the Midnight Gospel. The, the, the Midnight Gospel is uh, really nominally focused on this guy named Clancy. And he is a space caster. He is a podcaster in space. And what Clancy does is Clancy visits all these other worlds interdimensionally sometimes um, by sort of like casting his mind across the universe and landing in, you know, in one of these worlds, uh, you know, with some kind of, you know, he's sort of inhabiting some kind of avatar, you know, often like kind of like a lot of us are doing, you know, on the web. And he goes on these um, very existential uh, adventures, uh, sort of talking about the meaning of life and talking about LSD and sort of Dharma and reincarnation. And I mean, these things just go go crazy. And so again, the sort of form of the show is a podcast. This is essentially a space cast. And he's interviewing someone that he finds on these worlds, someone that he's con just come to sort of you know, see what their lives about and see what they're doing with their, with their lives there. And, um, you know, it's, but the, the sort of again that that's sort of the the, the core of the show and there, it's it's, in, it's like a, a podcast interview so it's usually clancy and one other person and they're having a dialogue of some kind and then in the background lots of crazy weird things are happening <laughs> So, I mean, I'm just looking at the picture, by the way, which is really interesting. <laughs> I when was the last time that we've seen a cassette player kind of thing <laughs> for new people? Do the I mean, young kids even that's, know what that looks That's what's really kind of like fascinating me about the show was just sort of this sort of mix of styles and eras. Mm -hmm. Like this is sort of in the future, but again, it has, there's cassette players and there's the I internet see. and the aesthetic yeah. of it was the thing that really got me excited because Again, you know, I don't, I don't like the normal trends. I mean, I, I do appreciate the work on Dribble, and I think it's fascinating. But Please. I'm looking You're for something. You're anti-trend. Come on. I'm looking for something different <laughs> myself. I'm looking for, for yeah. something that kind of delights me or excites me or you know mm -hmm. gets me to think about things mm -hmm. in a different way. And that's what really, that's what really gets me going when it comes awesome. to design. And so, uh, it was really the aesthetic of the show that really 
attracted me to sort of saying like, again, like not only the format, but also the aesthetic. I, I really wanted to create something with this, this sort of aesthetic vibe. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, here's Clancy uh, and he's out here and he's also, uh, also like what they refer to as a simulation farmer, <laughs> which okay. is also one of the weirder terms, <laughs> more esoteric terms uh, in, in the show. Um, and he has, he interfaces with his computer which he has, which is a triangle screen, which I a just, triangle just I was just like, oh, this is beautiful. You know, very vaporwave aesthetic, you know, if you're into the vaporwave sort of yeah. scene, uh, you know, that sort of like mid 90s, I guess maybe that's also why it resonates with me because, you know, mm -hmm. like I am a, I'm a child of the of the of the mid 90s, really. Mm -hmm. um, and so like all these this whole thing just really really i just really love and of course like yes. you have all these you know have the ui elements here oh my goodness. zoom in right you sort yes. of see yes. all these and i'm just like oh this doesn't see feel like <laughs> anything else i've seen in, a, in an app and i'm like i let's let's do that let's do that oh yeah <laughs> triangle screens 90s i mean that sounds amazing and i don't even know what that is actually i'm super curious in the chat if there are other people who were children of the 90s because i think that a lot of kind of what uh, what this show kind of seems like it's doing is bringing up that nostalgia, right? And I always mm -hmm. love to know what generation where designers are at today, you know? Are they like us, where we just want to design triangle screens all day? <laughs> or maybe they're newer and hip and they're like, well, Talon, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you designing tri triangle screens? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to be designing for. We're just, Was today that a we're cat? designing for a triangle scene. Uh, there is a cat on here for some reason. I don't even know. Like, and like, that's what I was so fascinating about sort of like grabbing just some random screenshots of like and things that were exciting to me, you know, mm -hmm. UI elements. Um, you know, different, uh, you know, different characters, different colors, color themes. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what's going on. And you got like, that's also one of my favorite things about design is when mm -hmm. you're working on a project like this. And I'm sure the direction of the animator, the artist here was really just like, you know, this person is, you know, trying to find something in a locator, like in a locator. Right. app. You see this guy with the fish head, fishbowl head right here. You know, he's trying to locate something on his sort of tablet device. And then the artist is just kind of given free reign to kind of interpret mm -hmm. that however they want. And there might be some specific notes like, oh, okay, well, you know, we want to have this thing in here, make sure you do this, right? But yes. for this show, actually, none of that really matters. This <laughs> stuff is all just happening in the background and it is, it is, it is beautiful. And so these are the things that are really, were really inspiring me when I sort of sat, sat, sat down and said, okay, what kind of app are we going to be designing today? Very cool. I can't wait to get into this. I mean, the colors alone are colors I feel we don't see in the apps that we use today. And and it's refreshing for sure. Um, these are beautiful though. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. So what, so we're designing or we, by we, I mean you, I'm just kind of comment on it, um, are designing a podcast app on the iPad for this main character or what yes. are we doing? We are going to be designing basically the so that's one thing that he doesn't really go into. So he's a he's a space caster, right? Right. But we don't really see kind of or, or get a sense of any of that listening experience that like say an audience would have, you know, for oh. Clancy's space casts, right? Like we don't see that. We see his computer and we see like his see. process of of like, you know, like finding things, like you know, searching for things on the web and you know, that kind of stuff. But we don't really like see that other experience that consumer experience right for, so this like, is okay. for us this is for this me for if us. i want to listen in on what clancy has got to say i'm going to open up my little ipad and take a look and follow along in his podcast it's in yes we podcast. we are going to be getting that transmission beamed to us from space nice, nice. and we are going to be exploring you know, all the different sort of things that that is on offer to us from all these different sort of you know all this sort of big universe and all these interdimensional you know, sort of uh, cr content creators, I guess you yes. can say, uh, <laughs> you know, we, how we, we, how do we discover that? How do we discover all the amazing stuff that's out there that's going to maybe like, you know, give us that like spiritual kick up the side of the head kind of thing. <laughs> I just had this moment, Talon, where you were talking about this because we're talking about it as like, <laughs> this is so cute, like intergalactic, but here we are watching like people being shunted out into space <laughs> in uh, in rockets and we're like, oh, how cute mm, it'll be. Mm. It's going to be the future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> intergalactic podcast. 
And oh, you know, I, I I'm a big, I'm a huge fan of Carl Sagan too. And oh, this, yes. in a way, like I, there's an element of like of like Carl Sagan here. You know, like putting mm-hmm. um, putting all the all the great sort of music and content, you know, in the spaceship and just like sending it out yeah. into space and beaming those signals deep into space. I'm like, there's a bit of that vibe going on here too, where you know, like if if we were, you know, receiving messages, you know, mm-hmm. from these other worlds, like what would that experience be like? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's, oh, we could nerd out about that forever, right? I, yep. <laughs> what you just said reminded me one of my favorite iconic things ever in my brain that I love is the is the gold record. That's the uh, mm-hmm. Voyager. Do you yeah, know the about Voyager. that? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, it's just, yeah. that's, oh, it's enchanting. I couldn't remember so. the name. I'm glad you remembered it. And actually that's, <laughs> if you look at like some of these, like, you know, little just sort of drawings and diagrams Yes. Actually, I'm going to go pull it up because I, I there. Uh, well, I was going to say, I was going to copy paste something in here into your thing because I was thinking about it. I don't even know what you're looking at, but I was thinking about this Voyager thing that's inside here. Yeah, here. We're, I, got, I got this up here. There you go. Oh, yes. Right? So there's an element of. I love it of this you know to some of those little you know like sort of detail yes. illustrations right like that you sort of see kind of throughout the, the midnight gospel ui um right there's sort of this, so this, cool. this huge like i mean i just love this so i don't cool. know i'm not even sure what it means it just sort of has I, actually i looked this up because i actually use this for um for a piece that i did a printer a print piece i did a risograph print um, oh I ended up pulling from from this design here. Yeah. Um, yep. You actually use this little. This is a. This is. Oh, that's right. It's a. This is a star map right here. Mm-hmm. This. Mm-hmm. This little piece right here is actually map. a star map, like mm-hmm. a locate, like a, to like Earth, really. Like this yep. is like a little map back to Earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yep. So that's what we're going to be inspired by today, and we are going to be designing out this app, this uh, this pod, the space casting application. Um, cool. Yeah, so I already kind of started riffing on some of these design elements and some of the vibe and some of the colors, color scheme, you know, of of the uh, space casting app. Of course, it's always where I, one of the places I love to start is by kind of establishing some of that sort of design system, you know, those global colors, those character styles, those components, those things I'm, I know that I'm going to be reusing throughout my application to create a consistent experience down you know, to create kind of a pleasing or consistent experience. So I started to kind of create some of these here. And we've got, you know, we've got a kind of logo type here, space cast. Nice. Awesome. We've got some we've got some colors here. I have I have a you know a progress bar which is about as far as I got on the UI <laughs> in this 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 section, but we are going to be creating some buttons and we are going to be sort of using them kind of throughout the experience. And just some other little illustra- uh, you know illustrative elements that we're going to add a little texture, you know, That's maybe, and maybe we'll even create, make them interactive and might, might even animate them a little bit. Oh my, who knows? Who knows? that's awesome. And look at that. I am just staring at your color palette on the left, uh, um, in the assets panel, mm. because I mean, how many times do you look at, <laughs> I mean, in modern UI design, how many times do you look at, you know, the colors and see that <laughs> on mm-hmm. the left? It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, that's really what gets awesome. me excited about this stuff is, you know, mm-hmm. like I, we can, yes, there are some, you know, tried and true, like, or at least previously tried and true, you know, styles and things like that, you know, things that, you know, we know from, you know, the, uh, the people doing research, at Google or Facebook or, you know, whatever, like, oh, these things work, you know, these things sort of like trick our brains to click on this thing or that thing. Right. Right. I mean, I think that's fine, but flying in the face of all that are you know like again ui again like those are the uis that have been like tested within an inch of their life to get the optimal the optimal sort of colors the optimal placement the optimal sizing you know whole thing you know, all that stuff and then the, flying in the face of all that are uis like snapchat or uis like tiktok or, or you know these other experiences that it's actually the experience that matters it's actually the ui that is facilitating that experience and the UI isn't really asking anything of you other than to get you to, you know, to be successful, you know, like engaging and, and you know, being in, in that experience. Um, and I think that's something that's kind of understated. And I think it gets kind of mixed up because in the tech world, you know, UX, UI designers are very obsessed with business, right? They're very obsessed with getting these metrics back and getting as, getting as much optimization as many people as possible, you know, clicking this thing. And that's fine, right? But like, that's not the end all be all of design. That's not the end all be all of experience design in particular. So 
Wow, that is that is Town Wadsworth, not Clancy, speaking philosophy <laughs> on design. Here you hear, you heard it here, folks. It's it's going to be a lovely next hour and a half talking about this because I do I do think this is something Talon and I talk a lot about, which is that kind of the counterpoint or tension, if you will, between functionality, achieving a business goal, and the balance of aesthetics, and really kind of creating some sort of you know visceral attachment as much as you can, at least, with digital experiences and 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 people who are interacting with them, right? So, mm-hmm. so yeah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so here I I have kind of our home screen for our space casting application. This is the place where we are going to like be able to tap into you know, all the great content that is uh, you know being served up, you know, transmitted through space and time, you know, to us here in the present. So this is kind of like uh, again, I've sort of you know been playing around with some of those elements. I don't think it's all kind of coming together quite yet. You know, but we're going to start to kind of bring this to life and we're going to start to kind of, uh, you know, kind of flush out this experience, you know, because this is a place where we want to discover great things and we want to be able to listen for things. We want to be able to follow or subscribe and we want to be able to, um, you know, maybe even see, you know, more details and see more about the content creators or about that episode. So this is a place where we're going to be, this is going to be, or we're going to be jumping off to you know, kind of all those things. So cool. awesome. Yeah. So kind of like our dashboard, our discovery place where you typically find uh, music or podcasts in this case, this is where we'll land. And then for today's show, I think, you know, we're talking, we've talked about the fact that we're going to try to do this flow a bit. Um, also, just I feel like, you know, to your process that you, the way you design town, you know, you're kind of sort of making up this living design system as you go. Um, and so that'll, I, I imagine that the first sheet we saw will be expanded throughout the show. And, and, you know, you were talking about how you're a fan of the next segment's theme, which is designing in the dark. And so I will be, for the rest of this time, asking the chat to continuously be the hovering art director, providing feedback, mm-hmm. um, influencing Dear Talon to uh, to make this thing as awesome as possible. So if you have suggestions, always chime in. Um, we'll definitely catch those and then make sure that you're just as part of this designing experience uh, as him and I are. Oh, I love that Val. Val's already we're in oh, the sh- <laughs> stream and I already want to make art based on the project. Absolutely. Yes, Val. Yes, you need to be one of these content creators that I will then sort of, you know, fill in you know this amazing experience like with the stuff coming from Val. I knew this would be right up your alley. Mm-hmm. Val. I was hoping you were going to be be uh, with us today. So um oh, oh yeah, and, and omen omen ninja yeah rick and morty as well uh, rick and morty's a little more cynical mm. but there's definitely i think things that are they're they're really fascinating and being said in in rick and morty as well um because i always go back to you know futurama that was um, mm. jess were you a mm. fan of, of futurama I did. <laughs> there's some there's plenty of memes there <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i like I, I love futurama and and like in some ways like this and rick and morty really are kind of like spiritual successors mm-hmm. you know to uh to futurama which i miss yes. every day i love that show so much also someone's asking do you create those illustrations in xd or illustrator xd or illustrator? yeah i do all this in xd I did Lovely. all this in XD. And yeah. actually, right before the call today, or right before this uh, this this live stream, you were designing, you were doing some vectors <laughs> in XD. And I was like, stop, Dylan, stop. <laughs> Show them what you're doing. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I, I was doing this just sort of killing some time before we came on the stream today. And yeah, Jess was like, all right, stop what you're doing. We will come back to this. Uh, and I just wanted, this is just a little flavor here. And this might play in a little bit to maybe some of the journey we're going to go on tomorrow because there is a secret component of this that I have yet to reveal. Oh. And it's all mainly because I have yet to completely figure it out myself. <laughs> but just to be completely honest, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, we have a, a maybe something we're going to try. We're going to get a little, little more out there tomorrow if that's possible. Um, and then this might be one of our entry points for that. But. Was that a pun or was that just unintentional that we're getting <laughs> a little more out there in this intergalactic uh, time with together? Yeah, no, it was all intentional. It's all intentional. Oh, oh I see. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have some folks in the chat who do love Futurama as well. They're saying, yeah, yeah. that's great. My favorite is the, 
<laughs> the fry meme. Uh, I have to say where he's like squinting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I always love that. Memes. Is definitely one of the best one of the best mm. memes from the Futurama days. Very cool. Um, I also love one of my one of the more obscure memes from that is the um, the the planet that they're all gray and <laughs> they're all like neutral. They're the neutral planet. And then yeah. like people are attacking the neutral planet and <laughs> they're not really sure th- to feel one way or another about that. And so there's the meme with the gray faced guy. Um, and that is one of my favorite episodes. And he's like, I have no strong feelings one way or the other. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, that's the antithesis of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's totally is. And I mean, that's actually why, why, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I, I actually really like that because it's actually not like myself at all. So, <laughs> well, I would say that's kind of the ethos of the whole team. Oh, there it is. <laughs> all I know is my gut says maybe. <laughs> Definitely, oh, definitely not talent at all. If you if you know me personally, uh, that is definitely not me. At all. Definitely not you. No, I was gonna say. I think in general, that's definitely not uh, ethos that our whole team <laughs> preaches. Mm-hmm, if anything, mm-hmm. it's the it's quite the opposite. Which is, if you don't show up to like a design review or a critique with a perspective, <laughs> then you know, come back oh, yeah. again soon. <laughs> Yes, indeed. You got it. So you gotta, you gotta come, and you've gotta, you know, have conviction behind your ideas. Absolutely. And you've gotta be willing to get in there and debate with people. Uh, yeah, that's definitely how how we roll. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Wow, very cool. Already doing some pretty neat stuff. You know, yeah. we'll be showing off some interesting features today for those of you who, um, you know, are newer to XD or maybe just haven't been following the recent weeks. We just came out with our newest release, which is uh, we do on typically a monthly basis. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, you can go ahead and go to the what's new page of Adobe XD, release 34. Uh, Some of the lovely features that we'll be showing today and tomorrow include 3D transform, I'm hoping a little bit. Oh, you know uh, it. <laughs> a feature that is near and dear to Talon's heart as he was one of the masterminds behind it. Uh, we'll also be showing off, you know, just some of the, the good ones, right? Uh, before this release was scrollable groups and multi flows. We've got a lot of great things that we've built this year that uh, we feel is going to be really, really helpful for making these kind of rich experiences. So you know, if you have any questions or you want to see one of the features uh, demoed in here, happy to show it to you. Need an excuse to show you something, we can make something here. Um, at the same time, if you think that something's going awry with the design and Talon needs some feedback, also throw that in the chat. I'll be mm-hmm. happy to field it. No, it you won't hurt anyone's feelings here. No, we're, not we're at all. Cookies. <laughs> not at all. We, I love feedback. Feedback is... Oh, he really does. <laughs> Constantly asking for it, which is awesome. Yes, yes, all the things. The only way I'm going to get better at this, this thing called design, right? is be able to you know to hear from other people and see what they think yes and yeah that's that's just what makes me a better designer oh hey kevin lee i know that man hello hey (laughs) kevin are we the dynamic design duo talent (laughs) uh we we are a duo together (laughs) uh that's maybe a lot for us to claim but we we do have a good time together that's for sure i would say so we we have a great time any excuse to hang out with this dude and design stuff and philosophize on design i actually was going to say something as he's making these squigglies um you know i think that when it comes to the notion of feedback right you hear a lot of things said and i don't know i would say that um most designers crave feedback, but when you actually give it to them, it's very hard for them to take it. Would you say, would you agree with that statement? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. I totally agree with that statement. I think, I think it is hard because I think, yeah, I think we, we are putting ourselves out there uh, yeah. often. And I think that is, that can be very vulnerable for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's definitely one of those things where it's a constant journey in life, right? Like even to this day, you know, when people do give me feedback on, you know, work or something, I, as much as I want it, it's also hard to accept it, right? Because there is a reason why you're doing it. And to balance it with the earlier point around having conviction behind what you're putting out there, right? It's a, it's, it's, it's a constant like back and forth, right? You have to have the conviction, but you have to have the humility to really, really listen 
And, um, you know, I was talking to actually somebody who was newer on our team recently about this very same subject. And um, we were talking about the fact that it's one thing to just kind of take the feedback. And, you know, I would say a lot of early designers struggle with just like balancing the feedback because you'll hear one perspective from one person, one perspective from another person and try to figure out what do I use and what do I not use. But then I would say after that, right, is the next level of feedback and and really understanding sort of why it's actually even there, right? Like, what is it about, like, what is it about the thing that you put out there that has created such a need to have that sort of feedback? Where's that feedback coming from? Like, mm. what perspective is it kind is it coming from? Is it coming from a business perspective? Is it coming from, you know, a more design execution usability perspective? Is it coming from even something else like the, the visceral sort of, you know, interaction that we're craving to see more in digital experiences as you're, you're definitely exploring in this design today talent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you, how do you balance that, Jess? Like, have, how have you balanced that in your career? You know, that's like, a good question. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, I kind of feel like I go on, I take for granted a lot of the things that I intentionally figured out. Like, I'm sure at some point I forget the answer to your question. Um, I, I like to think that there's definitely, I would say there's a triangle. Um, I would say that, well, maybe, is it a triangle or is it a square? I'm starting to think there's four little points to it. Um, <laughs> I think there's always a business, a business case, right? And so there's mm -hmm. definitely a reason for building this from a business standpoint. We're all hired to work on these things and put these things out there. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think there is a, a perspective that comes from implementation, the, the feasibility, the ability to do something and making sure that, you know, um, you're creating something and you're creating something with just enough scope that it's able to provide the value it needs to, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is definitely the side that's much more aesthetics uh, and maybe this one's underplayed, I think, and maybe UX a bit, which is like, you and I both agree, like there is a need to create that visceral connection, if you will, um, between a digital surface and the human that's interacting with it. Some people call it intuitions or not intuitions. Some people call it intuitive experiences. Other people's refer to as, as uh, delightful interactions, you know, um, mm -hmm. my, and that's where a lot of micro interaction works. You know, some people it's just about like brand and that connection you have and familiarity you have and nostalgia you have. Hence why new morphism is such a thing again. Mm -hmm. um, and then the fourth little thing I would say, cause I said it was a square would be um, the usability of it, right? Like balancing constantly known patterns that people mm -hmm. that consumers are familiar with along with new innovative patterns which uh, improve the actual experience of how a user gets something done right mm -hmm. um, so so yeah i mean in a long-winded way i would say i think of those four things and then i think in the context of the moment of um of the project i'm on you know which of those things is the most important thing to consider and that usually guides me in terms of how i take in feedback and apply it to my work yeah yeah that Ooh, context that is important limited. i mean you know <laughs> no i like it you meant you, you touched on a lot of really important factors when it comes to you know like re uh, really understanding the context and the goals that you have and in, 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 with your design right like that knowing that and being i mean again you and i just were very opinionated people unlike you know, the, the gray <laughs> no, the gray uh, guys uh from futurama <laughs> um right like like we you and i have like we're always sort of you know, we're thinking very deeply, very critically about you know what who you know what we're doing as designers, our goals, are right, the goals that we have in mind, mm -hmm. um, and so when we come to the t to the table for feedback, whether it's a crit critique or review, like we've thought long and hard about what we want to get out of that, mm -hmm. and when you focus on those goals, it actually again like it actually helps you kind of see outside of yourself because uh, here's here am I here's here's me putting in you know my passion and energy like into this design mm -hmm. um but my goal is to create a very delightful and exciting and pleasing experience and help the user kind of achieve their goals and so you know if people want to come in and really assess my work i'm really looking for them to sort of pick it apart and say where it's not going to work for users yes. of any type yes. right yes. and that's what i'm looking for and so it helps me kind of see outside of myself um mm -hmm. you know is you know but again that being said I, you know, you and I both like when, when we feel like we're right, we also feel like we're right. Um, so, you know, like they're, they're not scenarios where we're completely, you know, completely, you know, like we're not like Vulcans, right? Like outside of ourselves and sort of assessing the design, like we're bringing it and we want other people to bring it. 
but we're going to hold them to a, to a high standard, just like we hold ourselves to a really high standard. Absolutely. So. <laughs> I would say along with the gray people, <laughs> Vulcan is not, is not a character. I would say to describe the two of us. For no, sure. <laughs> no, definitely. We are not Spock by any means. The two no, of you no. And I. All um, right. So, uh, actually Omen Ninja here in the chat actually said that, um, you know, are we going to animate? the signal and and to that i say yes omen we are going to animate this oh. um so here we are we're gonna have a little fun with auto animate and we're gonna do some work with the uh, components and states because again this is going to be a can this is going to be a permanent fixture kind of yes. on our dashboard here right yes. here it is sort of hanging out here and you know i i want though when people interact with it for it to animate and to do kind of cool interesting exciting things yes. um so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a component out of this and we are going to i'm just going to move our video chat i so I always place it right so i can see your face but i'm always sort of putting it like right in the way of the ui in some some way <laughs> i'm just going to put that over there all right so i am going to create a component so what i've done is i've kind of grouped all these elements together Right, and I've I've got a mask here, so I've got all my squiggles inside of a little frame inside of mm -hmm. a mask, and I've got some other little textural elements in there. And what we're going to do now that we have that all wrapped up together is I'm going to create a component out of this. And so here in the assets panel, I'm going to hit the plus button, or I can also hit uh, Command K for those uh, who are well. Who, who are, are you uh, a Are you a K Command K, or do you hit the plus button? I'm just actually curious now. I do not hit the plus button. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and to be perfectly honest with you, I just gave some feedback to our designers in this space and say that <laughs> nobody uses the plus button. Why is that? Hey, if someone in the chat uses the plus button, that's important user data that we'd like that to is. collect. <laughs> Who of you uh, XD users in the in the chat uh, uses these plus buttons? This is going to do some live user feedback session here <laughs> right now. And we're going to take this back to the team. And this is important because if you say that nobody uses it, then we're going to go back and we're going to tell them that. I'm going to change that. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was actually me giving feedback to our designers actually working on the much anticipated feature of pages right now. Um, I was giving her some feedback around that plus button and mm. um, that it's not really telling me anything. It's not really saying like, it, it, yes, it, it it's a plus. So I'm definitely going to assume that it's going to add something. But you know, maybe it becomes a little more, a little, little less intentional. It's just, it's very generic right now. You can use it or you can not use it. It's not really helping you get to that next step in being successful. You know, working with components, working with styles, or working with colors. Mm -hmm. Like, what is XD asking you to do? You know, like it, like it's hard to say sometimes when UI again is is not very descriptive or it's not helping you kind of take that next step. So mm -hmm. it was in the context of pages. I was saying, hey, maybe the plus button isn't good enough. Maybe we need yeah. something better. So. And I'm seeing that Devon is just now installing XD. Thank you for installing XD. We hope you like it. And, you know, uh, if you're a first time tuner inner on these Adobe Lives, these are not just live as much as they say that they are Adobe Lives. They are actually recorded. You can watch <laughs> our mm -hmm. lovely conversations as much as you'd like offline <laughs> afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's your cup of tea. Um, and there's plenty of great uh, resources around. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna take this moment to uh, do a shout out real quick to our Discord channel. Uh, if you're not yes, familiar, Discord. we have uh, multiple Discord channels. XD has one specifically where we run all sorts of lovely things. We run uh, what is, we'll talk about tomorrow as a daily creative challenge where you can really mm -hmm. learn about uh, how to use specific features in XD and you actually uh, get some live feedback from various wonderfully talented folks in the community. You can also put your portfolio work in there and get some great feedback. I mean, honestly, I'm going to date myself when I say, when I was learning UX, like I, <laughs> I didn't have these things, right? And mm -hmm. and now we have this. It's so awesome to be able to immerse yourself and learn these things. There's just so many great resources out there. I'm, I'm quite jealous, I have to say. So admit. great. And of so. course, the amazing Howard Pitsky mm -hmm. is super active in this Discord channel. Uh, oh, yes. Jess and I are here as well, mm -hmm. as well as the whole Adobe Live team. Go check it out. It's a great resource if you yes. if you're just getting started with XD. So oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. And there and speaking is of feedback, the... getting feedback on on your designs as well. And it's also the uh, if you're looking at the screen, it is uh, that Bitly uh, link. But make sure it's a uh, what am I going to say? It's ca ca <laughs> sentence case. It's got capitals in it and non capitals. Sen in it. Yes, Ti yes. Title make title sure case. You, sentence make sure case. you yes, use yes. the capitals as needed and the non capitals as not needed. <laughs> very elementary way of me saying mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. 
Exactly. All right. So yeah. here we know. <laughs> Getting back to the design portion of our stream today. Uh, <laughs> here we have a, all right. So, so Omen had a great suggestion. We are going to animate uh, this component here when people interact with it. And I'm going to use states, component states, and with auto animate to start to animate this little, this little piece of UI. So, all right, so I've created a state. I mean, I created a component out of this. You can see it's here in my component. If I, now that now that I have it, if, again, if I drag it out and I have this copy, right, Ooh, it's over that. here. And if I go back in and I change anything about the main component, what's gonna happen is those changes are going to be propagated to the copies, right? Yep. So this is why components are super handy. Again, working, thinking systematically. It's one of those things that shows that you're a pro Right, that you have kind of, you know, uh, and you kind of developed your, your, you know, you've worked enough to figure out like, hey, I should be working in this way and it's going to help me later on. Again, here we are, we are going to be uh, using components so that later on, if I use this uh, transmission, transmission signal component anywhere else, if I change it at the main component, it's going to automatically update everywhere and I just save myself a ton of time. So yes. again, you know, I can't be a bigger advocate for working and thinking systematically, particularly for UX UI design. So that's why I'm just a big fan of the assets panel in general. Yes. So, all right. So here's what we've got. We've got our component and now I'm going to create a state, which means, you know, states are for interactivity. So if someone is going to interact with a component and it's going to change in some way, that says that there, that's a state basically. That's how you're gonna wanna use states. And so now in, when I have the main component selected over here in the property inspector, I have, I can see, oh, I have the D, I have a default state for this component. This is the default state of this component. I can here interact with the plus button, which of course, you know, and the plus button. Well, we, we don't need to say any more about the plus button today. We're good on the um, plus button today. <laughs> we're good on the plus, We're going to click on that and super handy. This is actually going to like actually just really jumpstart me into creating that interactive state. And again, I'm going to be able to wire this up with some interactivity in prototype mode. But if I just wanted this to be like, say, like a hover state, which maybe wouldn't make a lot of sense because we are designing for the iPad, but we're going to do it just for just for fun today. <laughs> we're going to click on create a hover state and that's going to create a new state and I can name it you know, like, and say oh, this is a hover state and give a custom name. And now like if I go in again, I can swap between these. And if I go into the hover state and I go in and I, we're going to change a few things, right? Because what I want to have happen is someone, some, someone interacts with this component. I want it to change states. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to basically drag this out a little bit like this. Oh. Same thing here. Actually, I'm going to make that one a little tighter there and we're gonna make this one all right so i'm gonna click on this stretch that out a little bit there and yes kevin i cannot wait to see this animated as well it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool it's gonna be fun and as he's doing this real quick, there is a little fun fact on when you do make components and you add a state, if you notice a little lightning bolt on the right, that lightning bolt is indicative of interactivity. And so it has basically some of the, um, some already pre set up sort of ways for you to kind of uh, interact with that hover interaction. Otherwise, when you make a new state, you're simply creating like a very blank, uh, component state, if you will, right? Without any sort of interactivity triggers baked into it. So mm -hmm. um, that's why you see on the hover, the little lightning bolt, because we have a lot of those kind of things uh, already mapped out for you when you make a hover state. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if we go, so, so again, I didn't actually have, because I chose hover state, XD actually automatically created that interaction for me. So now that I have those two states, and you can see I can swap, I can switch between them like this, right? Mm -hmm. And I, so now this, this mm -hmm. component now carries with it both of those states. If I drag out that component here, so this is the copy. You see the copy. I can swap between both of those states on the copy as well. Awesome. All right, and if I change anything here in the main component, of course it would automatically update and change on the other one, on the, on the copy as well. And if I go into prototype mode, again, Jess was mentioning here, We've already wired this up for you. So from the design from design mode, if I create a, a hover state, we've already wired it up for you. So here I again I can the in the prototype mode, I can see both of my states, I can swap between them. And now I can also see 
the interactions that have now been sort of automatically defined for me. So again, XD is kind of jump starting me to creating a really great sort of hover state yep. for my component. All mm -hmm. right. So, and Jess is mentioning the lightning bolt. You can see the little lightning bolt here, sort of dangling off here on the wire saying, hey, there's an interaction and it's wiring up the states. Thanks. So what we can do is actually go into the preview window now. And if I go down Ooh, here. Oh my goodness. Oh. Look at that. That is wow. awesome. That's Whoa, cool. psychedelic. Whoa. That looks cool. <laughs> that's way cool. All right. That's really cool. Very cool. And that's just how easy it is. I just basically like create a state, change a few things, auto animates, auto automatically wired up for me. And I go and I hover over that component and you can see it start to change. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That is so awesome. So cool. So cool. I have to admit, when you were making it, I didn't think it would be very cool. <laughs> Just the way you were warping it. And then, I st and then you did it and I was like, wow, this is like, way, way cooler. Uh, I, I, that's one of my favorite things to do. And this is back, I think I may have mentioned this in the last stream. Um, one of my favorite things to do in After Effects was to basically like set up some keyframes. Mm -hmm. So like quickly take something, a little composition, set it and then move forward in the timeline a bunch, make a new keyframe, change a bunch of things, just like, yeah. you know, just see, go crazy with it, right? Like not just like little changes, but like big changes. Yeah. And then just like hit play and like see what would happen. Oh like, yeah. Those are those are fun and exciting moments that are that discovery. They are. You know? they are. Yes, Ricardo. What sorcery is this? This is the Wadsworth sorcery, I will say. He is pulling some magic interactions out of his hat. Today's mm. hat, by the way, is different than the last time mm. I think you streamed. Was it was it different hat last time? I feel like you wore the uh the fedora type of oh, hat. Oh, did I wear the fedora time. last time? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit more of a important like max the that with that hat I feel you wear on the special special days. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my a game hat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is my casual hat today. This is the casual, casual uh, San Francisco Seals hat. Yep. There you mm -hmm. go. There you go. So yep. <laughs> if you watch our stream a lot, you can watch for that. You'll see <laughs> all egg. the different hats. Uh, it's actually my birthday very soon, and uh, I have on there. A, a, my family has asked me what I would like, and I just sent them a bunch of links to hats. So <laughs> I want to know what hats you want. Uh, happy early birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm also going to do a little something else here just because, wait, am I, I got to make sure I'm, I'm doing this right. Nope. I would, did that wrong. I want to, <laughs> I was going to add just a little, little more fun to this. Again, I'm, uh, you know, when you're sort of evaluating and seeing your design, you start thinking, you know, new things start to kind of spark. You are like, okay, what, what else can we do here? I was just mm -hmm. going to do, do a few other just little things real quick, just because, just because. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you caught our stream last time, uh, we were doing a Max one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, and uh, you know, I know talent designs like this, but I but I also encourage it as well, which is just really constantly having preview window open, always just like playing with it and watching it in real time, and and having that really be a driver in your creative process here, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the reasons why we were so adamant upon building an experience in XD that was, you know, you look at design to prototype and it's a seamless kind of experience between the two is because of just how important it is to, to look at the things as they come to life rather than just be those static pixels that you see on canvas. Mm -hmm. Experimentation is key. And as some of you know, Miss Frizzle is like my, my idol of muse. And so you really just have to get a bit messy here and definitely play in that preview window as much as possible and see your interactions come to life. Oh, I no, I did. I forgot to switch back to my default state. There we go. <laughs> Whoa! Now we're getting Whoa, some real like zoom no, action okay. going on there. That's really cool. Okay, I like that. I think that's pretty good for now. Let's. Oh, uh, Ariana, that's that's a great question on loop animation. If we were going to do this on a loop, um, <laughs> Munir, Moon, you've been so nice in the chat today, Munir. I forgot to, to sort of shout you out earlier. Uh, <laughs> my name should be, uh, as in Hogwarts, Wadsworths. And, as in Hogwarts. <laughs> this is cool. design magic school, design musician school. It's yes. funny. I'm actually reading the third one to my, the third Harry Potter book to my children right now. Oh, so. which one is that again? That one's That's uh, the prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I think it's, could be my favorite book and can, definitely my favorite movie. Can I admit something really kind of awkward? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Well, I'm now yeah. admitting it to all the people who are watching the stream, but it's too mm -hmm. late. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm running this path. I, uh, 
I'm not going to give away what happened in the fourth book, but I distinctly like cried <laughs> mm. in the fourth book. The fourth it was book, very moving. Definitely the, the sixth <laughs> book. My goodness, the sixth oh, yeah. book was a was just a heart was just a wrench. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Um, so um, Ariana had a question about looping animation. So we're going to do that real quick because why not? I've got all the pieces I need right here to do this. So we're going to do a slight variation. So. I, I was animating this on states. And so right now on states, states are, are most, mostly for again, interactive components, right? That's how, that's why you would use states. If you have a bunch of components on a screen and they each have different sort of interactive states to them, that's where you would use states. But if you wanted to do something that was kind of more looping, um, I have a quick way we could actually do this right now. And this is using sort of time transitions. So what we would do is do kind of a, a couple different, we basically duplicate this artboard. And we essentially swap back and forth between those states. And then we would set up a timed interaction between those artboards. And then once we sort of hit go, then th this animation would just kind of loop. And so we're gonna do that real quick because it's it's fun. So all I would have to do now, because I already had this set up, again, is I could go in here and actually swap to my hover state. And then I'm gonna go here and I'm going to swap back to my default state. And that's essentially, actually we don't even need, we would, I don't even need that one. We just need these two. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go into prototype mode and we're going to wire up this interaction. And I'm just gonna do this like really simply. When you click, basically it's going to go to the next screen. And what I want it to do, of course, is to auto animate between those um, because again, I want to nicely, again, XD does all the magic for you, all right? Just so it says, okay, make these changes animate in this way between these two artboards or these two states. So that's pretty good. And we're gonna change this duration just a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. We're gonna up that a little bit. And then from here, we are going to do a, actually let's do one more, let's do one more. So we actually one need one more. We're gonna do this one here now that I think about it. And then from this one, we are going to then do here and we are gonna do, instead of tap, we're gonna do time. And essentially what this is going to do is essentially just wait. And again, I can tell it how long I want it to wait. In this case, you could just do zero. Uh, and then it will then just transition automatically to the next screen and it will animate very nicely back to the original state. And then if I really wanted to, to make a loop, I would just drag that back and I'd hit time. So once I trigger this, the preview is just going to be looping back and forth, back and forth between those two artboards. So let's go check that out. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna just click. Ooh, there you go. Ah. There's the Ooh. looping animation we created using three artboards and a component with two states, but you don't really need that part for this for this part. It's very mesmerizing. It, it is. <laughs> Look at that. So nice we are the, the prototyping team is working on timed transitions between states that is mm -hmm. on the roadmap that is something they're working and you, you can just imagine how alive your UI could be when when we sort of have that feature right just yeah. have these little little elements looping and then if you interact with them maybe they'll stop or maybe they'll change or you know do something else cool mm -hmm. just have these little elements just like doing their thing on the screen. So and uh, and just in, in case you were following along for a point of clarity, you do only need two artboards. The reason you why do. Talon made three was because he wanted to trigger it with an, mm -hmm. an, an interaction that he did to prompt the loop. Yeah. But it's just a two artboard sort of thing. So. Yeah. yeah. So in the future, we would be able to do that on any component with states. Uh, today, the only limitation on the timed the timed trigger in the prototype mode um, mm -hmm. is that it has to be at the artboard or at the at the higher level, the art the art between artboard uh, artboard artboard level. Now imagine if you put a, a little audio clip in there. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, an intergalactic like, podcast. I like this. <laughs> I like this sound. idea. Sound. Mm. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. Sound. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any queued up but we we can dig into sound not yeah, yet just, no, not either. yet but, but tomorrow hopefully tomorrow will be i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm definitely gonna grab some audio clips so we can do some audio stuff there okay so here we have uh kind of our dashboard again we kind of have a little fun right we did this little interactive element we've got some other sort of pieces here and you know of course i'm browsing a bunch of um a bunch of different you know pod uh, sort of space casts here so um you know we want to start interacting with this in some way so we've got 
uh, what I'm gonna do here is go back to design mode and I have a uh, repeat grid here. And the repeat grid has four sort of featured selections from the space casting world. And I mean, but like, is that it? Can I see more? Let's see some more. Um, so what I'm gonna <laughs> do is actually going to just drag this out because it's a repeat oh grid. Oh my goodness. Right? So I've got one, I've got four. I've got many, many <laughs> different titles I can sort of look at, right? But of course you're like, Talon, this is falling off the screen. That's not terrible. Good. That's no good. That's, That's terrible. terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gonna create a scrollable group out of this. And what this helps me uh, up here in the property inspector, I have a couple different options here for scrolling. They're underneath the trans. They're in the transform section, um, and you can see I have uh, horizontal scroll, I have vertical scroll, and I have horizontal oh, and vertical scrolls. scroll. If you really wanted to get like crazy about it, um, so I'm just going to actually click one click. I'm going to create a scrollable interactive scrollable group. And what that does is it actually kind of creates a little mask now on top of my group. And you can see here in the layers panel, when I did that, I'm going to do it one more time. So I've got my repeat grid here selected. Um, and then I click on scrollable group and you can see it wraps it up inside of a mask. And now the blue controls allow me to control the sort of area that, that I have to be able to scroll within. Um, and I can so drag that, of course, you know, uh, left or right from either side, right? Um, this is going to be the window which my the user is going to be scrolling, and I can set that wherever I want, right? And if I double click in, you can see, okay, all that content is still there. All of those, all those possible featured podcasts are still there and available for me, right? And what this does is now that I go into the preview window, and I you know, I see four here, and if I scroll. You see, Ooh. I have now a bunch more uh, options. May so. I may I rewind you back in your workflow there for a you, second? Yes, yes, I, you may. yes. I would like to touch on something that's a little bit of a fun fact. So we'll control Z yourself through this experience a little bit just mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. the scrollable group is created. So we have this repeat grid. So you do have the layers panel open. I just kind of want to uh, bring people's attention to where that is. So Talon has a repeat grid here, but then if you look at the other elements around there, there's like a mask group to the right. Um, you know, there's another repeat here to the left. And then um, watch when he hits the scrollable group, but now make the scrollable group um, that you just did right All now right. with this thing. So feature base, base cast, mm -hmm. click. When we make our features in XD, we think a lot about what the user's intent is going to be. And so what you notice in this screen is the fact that that scrollable group is actually already clipped to a certain point um, it's actually butted up to the next object that you see on the right here. Mm -hmm. And we do what we can with these kind of features to try to, you know, think a little bit ahead of where you're trying to go, look at what's on the on the canvas and try to uh, make some educated guesses in order to make, you know, what would have been manual for you to have to adjust on your own a little bit simpler. And yep. so um, this is just an example of that, right, of the fact that you did have a very long going element across the canvas and, um, you know, when you start using XD more and more, you'll notice a little bit of those decisions going in. And um, hopefully when you do start noticing that, you can anticipate how XD will work for you in that regard um, with this thing like scrollable groups. Yeah, so it's, it's that's a kind of little fun fact there. So. It, actually, a way we can really show that, I think, to full effect. Let me just do this here. because Let's just say we were doing the phone version of this. Um, so I am going to create a phone here. We'll just get rid of this copy because that's just a copy and that object's not gone because I have it here in the, in the assets panel. That's a component. Mm -hmm. So it's great. <laughs> so um, let's, let's kind of step this back. Let's do this. Let's paste this over here. Okay. Um, so I'm actually going to unscrollable group that real quick. And I'm going to change this dimension just a little bit here. Okay. So here's this object. And as Jess was saying, again, we're really trying to sort of trying to try help you get further along and kind of understand your intent. So I've got this object, it's on a phone artboard. And of course it's 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 extending well beyond that. But I have it selected and again, it knows that it's on this artboard. So if you go into the layers panel, again, you can see in XD knows that object's on that artboard, right? And we can go back up here, you can see when we, you know, there's, there's, the, there's the artboard, I double click on it, it takes me there, there that is. I go over here and I click on the scrollable group, bam. It mm -hmm. automatically snaps to and masks to the width of my artboard in this case, yep. right? So again, I, I wouldn't want my scrollable group to extend beyond my, you know, beyond my, the width of my dimensions of my artboard here in this case, 
And again, we're sort of in anticipating that next step. What are you intending to do with this group? Exactly. When you, when you create a scrollable, an interactive scrollable area on it. And so it's contextual, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. in this case, the only objects around are the artboard and the actual repeat grid itself. And then the other artboard that we had with the iPad, you know, you've got other objects there. And of course, the context is going to be different from case to case. And so, you know, one of the one of the principles that we really uh, focused on when we designed these features is to just make sure that we're removing a lot of that manual work and and really kind of being one step ahead to help you not spend more of your time remajiggering some of the things on Canvas, but actually being able to like experiment, right? Let these things come to life as you see fit, or maybe even like create some happy accidents that you know create more ideas down the line. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, you can control again like the width. And the height of the of this sort of scrollable area mm -hmm. you know, here inside of the uh, inside of the property inspector, right? When I have now this group selected, I can control precisely again like the the width or the height or the position of again. I want to move this back. No, that one. All right. So I can sort of control all of that here within the property inspector. Super handy, right? Super way for me to work quickly and accurately. And then I go and we preview this. Do that. All Very right. Cool. So we've got some scrollable areas there. I'm also going to do that same thing here for our two, you know, uh, areas here. You can see it snapped to the artboard there, and I just have to drag it up just a little further. Yep. Here, to create that. Same thing here. We'll drag that out a little bit. Create a scrollable group out of that. We'll drag that up a little bit. Back there. Now we go and we look. Oh, wrong artboard. Go to this one. And then there. And Should then we, since up. you've done this twice now, and that there you go, scrollable groups for you. Um, I am now noticing a pattern in the preview window, Talon, and I'd like to suggest a feature called multi flows. Mm. <laughs> yes, my goodness. Wow, that's amazing. You're right. So I'm going to go here into project mode. And if you, one of the, again, you know, was one of the things that, again, if you've used XD before, um, again, you can understand that when you sort of start, wherever you start from uh, with your interactions, that's the home art board, essentially. And that home art board is where your preview window and your prototype viewer, when you share it, will sort of always start sort of at the home, of course, as, as you intended to. But now that we launched uh, just, just a month ago at Max, is the ability to create multiple home art boards and sort of define multiple flows. So in this case, you know, here I'm going to go into the prototype mode and I have my iPad screen selected. Again, this is my dashboard. I can basically create, you know, click on the little home icon and this will allow me to you now name and create a sort of separate flow for my iPad. Uh, let's say iPad flow, All right? And I can go do the same thing here, create that, click on the home icon, and this is my. Right. And now I can have and maintain kind of two flows kind of within or, or many more flows if I wanted to eventually. Yep. Um, actually, here, I'll just create this one, too. This is my um, looping animation flow. Yep. Right. You see when I, I can click on those headline, those little the little labels there, it will select all my artboards that are that are sort of connected to that flow. And now I can kind of move them around. Super mm -hmm. handy. Look at that. Exactly. Um, yeah. So now I can kind of again maintain multiple flows within my document, and then when of course when it comes time to share, I can actually share different URLs, different prototypes from this document for each of the different flows. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got this here. All right. So I've got a couple. We've got a couple different UI elements going on here. Um, let's see. I've got. I've got this this section here where we're going to be able to click on and see different different sort of content, different different space casts in, in our app. I've got these sections here where I can see a little more a little more detail. I mean, a little, a little more variety, you know, different different lists, different curated lists, right? Uh, so when you see here in our dashboard, we also have this profile section over here. I think that's kind of what I, what I was trying to set up here is that we've got kind of the main content area and then I've got kind of my profile. I've got again, sort of who I am, the things I'm into and excited by, the things I've been listening to. And of course the all important galactic transmission signal. Mm -hmm. um, 
how how far afield am I able to sort of browse today based on my <laughs> connection with the universe? Your galactic connection. We're no longer in uh, what is that five G anymore? We're, in, we're yeah, in, we're like, like in like a, we're in infinity G. Really, we're just like completely <laughs> uh, out there. Um, yes, yes. All right, so we've got a couple yeah. different things going on here. I'm going to wrap up this section too because this is um, sort of other podcasts, I mean, other space casts I'm going to be listening to, tuning into. Right. Um, I need some great names for some some space casts though, uh, chat. So we got to name all these things. Again, one of the important parts, and we'll have a little bit more of this uh, kind of figured out for tomorrow as well. But if you were to name a intergalactic space cast what would you what would you name it a space cast that's yeah be interesting to think of what what would i want to listen to oh by the way welcome joel welcome to the stream um and again we're kind of one hour into this so if you are just tuning in now you are <laughs> witnessing talon uh who is our principal designer on xd making a not a podcast ipad app but a SpaceCast uh, iPad app where you can tune in to intergalactic space casters such as Clancy, inspired by the show Midnight Gospel on Midnight Netflix. Gospel. Um, and you can tune in and listen on your intergalactic G uh, transmission signal, uh, the lovely profound things that this multicolored neon sprite has to say about life and design now and such. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show, and we appreciate you tuning in. <laughs> Quantum Heap is what Lindsay says. <laughs> the Dippers. Oh my gosh! Quantum Z Heap. Is okay, what that's Palama amazing. Says. That's Palama amazing. Says. Okay, yes. okay. So transmissions from Mars is what Omininja says. Look at these right, names. Right. And Benjamin's asking, "What if I need to share all the flows within one link?" Winky face. Winky face back. <laughs> Winky face back. <laughs> Um, <laughs> definitely a feature the team is, is looking at, um, yes. making it again, we sort of, and this is kind of you know, iterative incremental, we yes. keep adding these features. And of course, then we have to kind of, uh, continue to you know, listen to feedback and get, get all that feedback to kind of plan the next, next release. Um, so definitely, you know, if you're looking to say now take all of your flows and have them available. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Sorry. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I am taking oh, some screenshots of the chat and making sure that they get tracked and I'm putting them um, to the right of your artboard. Are... Zilla, you're killing me. <laughs> these are really, really good names, folks. I feel like one of the most, you all have this amazing superpower <laughs> of having the best names ever. Um, and by the way, in case you're wondering where all these random things are coming from, and you don't, you're not familiar with XD, uh, we do have uh, me sitting in the top right corner. It isn't just talent designing. I mean, I'm just really just stalking him in the XD doc, but up there in the top right corner is my little avatar uh, because I am in this doc with him. Uh, I technically could completely change everything he's got going on here if I wanted to sabotage him on the stream, <laughs> which I won't, of course, because no, 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 you know yes. the work that you have is very beautiful, Talon. Um, and then <laughs> this chat's got some puns. My goodness. They are on top of it. My Val's goodness. Val's on fire with these puns. The Milky Wave. Val, Val, you always impress, I have to say. Marzipan's also a lovely, Amazing. <laughs> a lovely one. Yes. And a little, and also a little, a little shout out to, uh, <laughs> to um, another, another strange uh, web cartoon, um, Homestar Runner. <laughs> oh man these are great names folks thank you amazing for oh adding them in um, amazing <laughs> oh man Paolo just added one more we need to someday do a stream tell them dedicated to puns yes yes we do <laughs> i don't know what we would make but honestly i i am like i am not very good at puns so the punniest, i'm always... we have to make like the punniest adobe live Fantastic! Like I don't even know. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. I'm already thinking of one now. There you go, Claire and Paco. You got it. <laughs> We're signing up for our next one to be punny. And and of course we are. I'm going to be immortalizing oh, all of you here. I love it. It's my favorite in, when we do this. Uh, so good. So good. 
pale blue dot show shout out to sagan <laughs> lovely all right thank you for the suggestions and by the way i mean i think this is a pretty fab looking app but if you guys have some suggestions you think we have something going on weird mm-hmm. it's a little difficult to navigate or it's perfect to navigate looking for all sorts of feedback so and i'm just going to keep speaking of navigation i was just thinking this needed some navigation here isn't what's the so actually i was gonna (laughs) i was gonna ask you what are those arrow thingies on the right (laughs) Ooh, i don't know what should they be chat what should those arrow (laughs) they're really just started life as a fun textural element Mm. i i don't i don't have any any hard or fast plans for them what what should they be i see you tell me, chat. We're just again. This is a this is a pod. This is a space cast. What what kind of things do you need? What what do you as you as a space cast listener? <laughs> <laughs> what what should those arrows mean? Um, you know, we've been doing these uh, live streams for quite some time. You and I both, and mm-hmm. um, it's funny because like at this point in the show, I would be like, well, we need more art boards, but. <laughs> The, the I would say that the tool has come pretty far in that we've done a lot of things to prevent art boards from even needing to be made. Um, there's just so many interactions here already uh, with this mm-hmm. iPad. Mm-hmm. Pretty, it's just pretty neat thinking about it because had we designed this exact application, um, you know, like even like two years ago, right? Mm-hmm. We'd be seeing a lot of, it'd be a very different canvas. We'd very, be very different, very different. So actually I had an idea here that will require another artboard. And it's also going to include, uh, of course, one of my favorite features, 3D What trans- is your, what is, what, I was like, what's 3D, one of your favorite trans- features? Trans- Talon, what are your favorite features? What are my favorite features? My favorite features, um, this is a great <laughs> question. Um, there are no favorites, but hypothetically. There are no favorites, but repeat grid never gets old for me. Of course, that oh, yeah. was one of the first things I ever designed for XD. Uh, that the, the got me and the team really, really, really excited, of course, was repeat grid. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, repeat grid uh, has been with us from the very first prototype we ever created in X uh, that was called Sparkler. Actually, do I still have? No, it's broken. I'm sorry. So sorry, everyone. I was going to give you a demo of the original prototype and it is broken i'm gonna have to uh hit up my my good friend on route and see what's up with that um so yeah um so repeat grid's been with us from the very beginning it was one of those first features where um again we were really thinking about what designers were trying to do and we were trying to optimize around that right like we saw in ux and ui design right same thing we're doing here all up and down the screen we are taking kind of a core you know sort of design layout element and we're repeating it and then we're just filling it with other content. And that was one of those first moments where the tool started to, to be more aware of the types of things you were designing. You know, Illustrator is an amazing program. Photoshop is an amazing program. You can do anything in those applications. Mm-hmm. And, and but the, it comes with a really high cost, that really high overhead in trying to figure out how to put all those pieces together to kind of do the thing that you're trying to do. Right, and something like again repeating things. There's not a great way to manage that. There are in tools like InDesign, again, because InDesign is a much more sort of tailored tool to editorial and print design. So there are some of those features, and you know I was really inspired by that um, by InDesign, and of course and Illustrator and Photoshop. But to really say like what tool would really help accelerate the work of a UX UI designer doing the types of things that they're that I see that they're doing inside of all these amazing new experiences. And yes. so repeat grid was like, was like number one. That was one of the first ones. And it was really a unifier. Um, you know, it also plays a role in the history of XD where it really, you know, we could have gone and implemented any number of features that uh, we had this massive list of ideas. Um, but but repeat, repeat, repeat grid really gave us a goal, really said, we want to help users do this and do it, you know, 10 times faster than they've ever done before. Um, and it really kind of helped us kind of get organized and actually, you know, make really fast progress towards that outcome. Mm-hmm. And so again, it's sort of, uh, for me, it's still the favorite because I got to design it, got to think about it, got to figure out how to get it made. Um, but also uh, the role that it played in the project that eventually grew up to become XD as well. So there you have it. Mm-hmm. Some, history, some lovely stories. I love hearing these stories, I have to say. I mean, I've only been with the team uh, 
somewhat recently on its journey. And so hearing Talon geek out about these things is really kind of, I don't know, I think it's kind of what keeps the heart and soul of our of the tool, right? It keeps it consistent. It keeps the North Star going, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and very, uh, very true. by the way, welcome. Welcome, D. Welcome. Oh, there's a question for you, actually, on a uh, scroll mm-hmm. panel. So how would it look if we had the scroll bars on the sections? So scroll oh, bars. Scroll bars. Good point. Well, so scroll bars are based off of the native experience. So mm-hmm. if you're working out of uh mac you know it will show in the way that natively your scroll bars show but if you're working out of windows um it's a bit different and so i don't know if that answers the question if you will but i think that's what you were asking is maybe how the, sh- the scrolls dinesh babu is uh, how you see them so i'm not sure if that answered but let us know mm-hmm. um but yeah and then welcome to the show teba sup you know by the way uh yeah we're both designers on xd and so if anyone ever has like obviously let us know if talon's designs are wonderful or or, or terrible um and also let us know if you have further punny suggestions for this Mm -hmm. app but also Mm -hmm. if you have any questions um talon and i just love talking about like the meaning behind design life and xd and so uh Mm -hmm. always happy to do a little bit of a AMA session, if you will. So, um, so let us yes, know. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had my fair share of, of, of subjecting you to an involuntary AMA. I trap you in a corner. I say, Dylan, explain to me why you mm. made this decision and these series of decisions. <laughs> I and I, you know, like it's it's always great for me because I just love, I love talking about that stuff. I love oh, yeah. thinking Absolutely. about it, and it helps me actually. And think about the next great thing or rethink things or re reimagine things. So yes. I, yeah, as most people know of me, uh, yeah, you can get me to talk about anything and I'll talk about it forever. So <laughs> it's fine. Things I'm really into. Okay. So I'm, I'm doing a little something cause I'm going to set something up on the next screen. So I wanted to kind of, um, I kind of re remade this to a certain extent because I wanted to do something on this next screen. So, you know, um, you see this a lot on like, um, kind of, you see it kind of like on Netflix, you'll see it on Netflix, you see on a lot of things where you're scrolling, you know, through a group. And if you kind of like hover on or tap on one, it'll kind of like appear like it's like coming forward, you know, kind of like coming up at you kind of from the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's see, I'm going to do this over here. Oh, so let's do coming. this. <laughs> <laughs> okay so and then i'm gonna have this so i've got this i've got my scrollable list here right and if i interact with this like there's nothing really going on but what if it could kind of kind of come forward at you a little bit and again the way i would do this of course in the past is i essentially just go in there and i would take this and i would scale it up like this so then when i go in and prototype this and say okay, i'm gonna tap on that and i want it to auto animate and i want it to kind of like you know bounce up a little bit so i'm gonna do a little snap and i'm gonna do a little point three there right so then when i go and preview this if i click on this right it'll just sort of scale up like that right Which super is non, non-destructive but slightly destructive it's it's well it's changed right so if yes. i go back and i look at these elements here the right, values have changed the, the values have changed so my type here again the type i want consistent across all of these uh these elements here is 22 point Proxima Nova, 22 pixel Proxima Nova. And I even have a style to that effect. I even have a 22 point Proxima Nova. That's the style that I've defined for this. But the minute I have scale this, if I go in and let's say I go in and actually now change this, this style, this character style. And let's say I wanted to, you know, make it a different color, right? I wanted to so change it to a different color. You can already see this happening. Mm-hmm. It is, this one has now been broken. This one is now no longer falling by the rules of the styles that I have defined. It is now broken because I well, scaled it, right? It's what we would call an override, right? Which yep. is that we think that, you know, when you scale something, it seems like an intentional decision to override the original properties that you had originally set, which is why you put it in the character styles to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yep. So again, like now I've got extra work. I've got to go back in and I've got to make a new style for that scaled up one. And then I got to remember, okay, I've got the, I've got the regular version and then I've got the scaled up version. 
okay, that that seems fine, but like it's extra work. And then if I go and deliver this to my developers, again, I have to explain to them, hey, these are essentially related, but this one is a scaled version. This one's not yet. So it's like, ah, right, right, that's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to undo here a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is actually use one of my, of course, new favorite features, which is 3D Transform. And 3D Transform is amazing. Again, this is, I want this to appear as if it is like coming towards me off the screen. Now with 3D Transform, I can do that. And actually, I'm going to turn on a little background here. For each of these, I gave them a little background, little card here. So as I interact with it, it can kind of calls it out a little more. So now what I can do here in the property inspector, there's a little 3D cube here in the transform section. I'm gonna click that on. It's gonna give me some new UI. And this new UI allows me to do a bunch of really cool things. It allows me to rotate around in three dimensional space around the Y yes. center. Uh, it's, just, it's like shiny. <laughs> it's like shiny with the, with, I know. Oh man, uh, and then of course with the really X shiny. as well. Look at yeah. that, amazing. But more importantly for our use case here, I can move things forwards or backwards in space. So if I hover over the middle, I can move this thing forward. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So now I just did exactly what I wanted to, right? The exact sort of effect I wanted. But what's really great about this is if I go in here and I look at the the different you know elements of this of this little of this uh, this this UI here, nothing has changed. It's still 22 pixel Proxima Nova. And now, of course, if I go in and redo that same edit that I was doing before, you can see it stays connected go. to the style that I have defined in my system. I have I, this is not an override. This is non. This is a non-destructive transform, which means I can go wild. I can rotate this in space. I can bring it forward. I can send it backward, and it's going to stay connected to my design system. By the way, I'll say understanding just what we just demoed here. Like if you're going to watch the replay of this stream, I would say watch this section because it's it's actually I think these are the the big pro tips is if you can understand kind of how the logic behind that worked and then, you know, harness the harness overrides in the truest sense next D, you can increase your workflow so tremendously just by taking advantage of little steps like that and planning a little bit ahead mm -hmm. of when you are going to do something that overrides something versus when you can leverage something like a 3D transform skill um, uh, feature in order to do to to make the experience you're making without actually jeopardizing um, those relationships of the design system that you've established, right? Oh so. no! And I ran into a visual bug. Oh my! Oh no! Okay, the the little the little uh, yeah things are. Let me see if I can. Hold on. I, now I got to now I got to figure this out. Hold on. <laughs> the tinker. Uh, and on in the meantime, two quick questions that did come up in the chat. Benjamin asks, it would be interesting if you could take your repeat grid and instead of ungrouping the repeat grid, but have a option creating into stack group right away, mm. unless you can do that already. Smiley face. Yes. Yes. Now, that's a great suggestion. And we are going to like screenshot that and send that. Is that Benjamin? Mm -hmm. Oh, Benjamin. Benjamin always gives the best feedback. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we're going to screenshot that Benjamin and get that to the team because the team is, is really trying to, 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 you know, kind of bring repeat grid forward. Again, we've added all these amazing features you know, into XD, stacks, um, scrollable groups, and we gotta take that, we gotta, we really gotta take repeat grid and bring it, bring it back up to speed. And so part of that work is going to be kind of bringing it together with stacks in some really powerful, amazing way. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, great suggestion, yes. Benjamin, as always. And design is never done. So we are constantly looking at ways to improve the features that we do have. Mm -hmm. Second question for Talon as he tweaks away is, uh, Munir asks, Talon, tell us about your story on how you became a UX designer and how you joined Adobe. Mm. That's great. That's cool. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a fun story, Munir. <laughs> I, um, so uh, I did not start as a UX designer. Um, as probably many of you. Um, just kidding. <laughs> That's all my um, so um, hold on, I'm just also debugging this. So I, I, I started life as a designer in um, actually didn't. OK, so it is looks like I had a little visual bug going on here um, with with the, the, the move forward. So we're going to we're going to come back to that and revisit that here in a moment. But um, 
So, um, okay. So back to my story. Um, so I uh, started as a designer um, in, I went to school in Salt Lake City, Utah. Got my associate's degree at the community college. I moved out to San Francisco to go to California College of the Arts, which is an amazing school in, in California. Um, and what I really wanted from it was that the, all the professors there were um, practicing designers. They all owned or ran or worked for you know, a major studio uh, in the Bay Area. And I really wanted to sort of, you know, go out there and get to know them. And I really kind of hit it off with one of my professors. His name's Eric Hyman. Uh, he runs with his partner, Adam Brodsley. They run the design shop Volume Inc. Uh, in San Francisco. Go check them out. They do amazing work. Still two of my greatest sort of friends and mentors um, in my career. And what I really attracted me to them and attracted me to the school in general was that um, the they really focused on design and, and sort of the criti- the skills of design and the application of those skills to many different many different mediums many different form factors so the designer was really not limited to be just a print designer or a you know web designer or an animator or mm. you know the, there there was no there was there was no boundary there is like how do you apply design thinking and the design skills to achieve your, the goals for yourself or your client so I, I really, and then of course, Eric was really emblematic of that and his studio volume Inc there, there, that's exactly why I wanted to go and work for them just because they worked on uh, books. Yes. They designed books as well, but they also worked on uh, museum exhibitions and environmental sort of design projects uh, as well as interactive design projects and branding. And of course, all the other things. So whatever you kind of needed as a client, you know, volume was there and had the capabilities to kind of help you achieve those goals. And so I went to work with them and I got to work on a really amazing projects. I got to design actually the OS for a, for a gaming system that never nice. launched. Oh. It was an educational <laughs> gaming system. Cool. Um, of course, as a design as a design studio, you never know that's going to happen. They pay you for the work and then they sort of go on and then you're like, <laughs> oh, did that ever come out? No, that never came no, out. No, no, it didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but it was like... really cool. I really I got to work on the UI for a game system, which was really cool. And I also got to design, um, I designed the exhibit space for the, the California Academy of Sciences. So if you're ever in the Bay Area and you go to in San Francisco and you go to the Cal Academy of Sciences, uh, a lot of the exhibit space I got to design. Uh, I to a certain to, Yeah, so that's really cool. Yeah, go check um, that out. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, and you know, like rock and roll posters, we got to do all kinds of pro bono work and work with really mm. cool places like 826 Valencia and YBCA there in San Francisco. So, you know, again, it was really more about design and the application of design and less about the medium. I wasn't a print designer. I wasn't a web designer. I wasn't, uh, you know, an exhibit designer. I was a designer. And um, uh, of course, uh, I had a child in the Bay Area, um, which is uh, tough to say the least in that economic <laughs> climate. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I need to be able to support, you know, my my new son and, of course, pay off student loan debts and provide, you know, benefits and health insurance and all that stuff. And uh, just so happens a friend of mine from CCA uh, got a job at Adobe a few years previously. And uh, he said, um, oh, why don't you come apply here? There's some because he, he was, you know, we'd go out together and he would hear about some of the challenges I was facing. I was doing great work and I loved it. And I loved, you know, Eric and Adam. I still love them to this day, but I needed to, you know, provide for my family. So I went over to Adobe and I really would not have considered Adobe previously at all. (laughs) Honestly, honestly, I would not have. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, I, there was a, there was a stigma to an in-house designer at the time. Again, this was. That's true. That was way back then. I was like, that was way back then. Almost 10 years ago now. Agencies are cool. Almost 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, And an in-house designer, there was a, you know, it felt stifled in your creativity, right? There was was real barriers to just doing anything um, of note, right? Wanted to be a, you know, I wanted to like, design again i want to design rock and roll posters all day long Mm -hmm. um and so i was like okay and then my my friend sean though who who was working there he he assured me he's like look he's like don't come in here thinking that it you know it's going to be a certain way because honestly you can make of it whatever you want that's just how supportive adobe is you know these are these are creative people they make creative tools like Yes, he said you could be designing an email template for months. That's definitely something you could be doing. It's like, or you could come in and do what I know you're going to do, which is to to just be you and and approach design in the same way. Um, and honestly, I had no idea what I was getting into, and I had no idea how much I was going to love the problem space. So I came in for the interview, and the VP of the design at the time he really liked the fact that I didn't have a you know UX design background. 
and you write a Zimbrecon that was really bringing a much more kind of well-rounded sort of approach to design problem solving. And uh, of course, I met with a bunch of people, they hired me. Uh, and in the first two months, they had me working on just fascinating problems um, for like the future of how creatives were going to be working. Um, and that really, that, that project turned into Creative Cloud. And I was just surrounded by this group of people that were supportive of one another. They were creative. They had, you know, interests that went beyond just like tech, the tech world. Um, and we were creating creative tools for other creatives to do amazing work. And so I got to think and talk about design every day. And so that's, that's, that's my story. That's how I sort of landed where I am and I've been here for almost 10 years now. And there is nothing more fascinating to me than be able to sort of to come and talk to all of you and talk to Jess and just make cool stuff, make great tools. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm still surprised thinking back on that, like um, how much I have enjoyed uh, my time in Adobe. So there you go. That's my story. Wow. That was, I've heard the story multiple times because I, well, people ask it on the stream. <laughs> and then I've also mm. obviously asked it myself personally. But I have to say, I can never get tired of it because it's quite the experience that you've had there. And I think it's always great to hear that because, you know, you go through and you're taking your next steps in, in your career and in your life. And it, I feel like oftentimes we think that we know the all the answers and that we know we have clarity, right, on the destination of mm -hmm. the journey, right? But it's yeah. oftentimes just so little to do with that, right? And um, it's, 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 felt, it's like a it's assuring to hear, you know, it's actually kind of like your creative process, almost in a way where it's like, you know, the context of what you're in, the situation of what you have to deal with, you know, um, you know, you don't know what you're looking for until you give it a shot, at least. And then when it's when you start to be in it, and you start to play with it a bit, suddenly it all becomes clear, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. That's, no, uh, that's I, great. Thanks for thanks for the question, Munir. I, I really, um, you know, I I, uh, I always you know recommend that people you know have a clear idea of the type of work they want to be doing and the things that excite them, um, right? Like if you can bring that passion, you know, that you have for that that what that, that subject matter topic or whatever it might be, like your work is only going to be better. Um, this is why Jess is amazing as well, is that she thinks as as deeply about the process of design as she does about like. The, the sort of visual aspects of design itself. And she thinks about the mechanics of it and how it all goes together. And that's why Jess and I really hit it off is because I recognize that from, you know, immediately when I met her. Um, and like, those are the people that you really want to surround yourself with and you want to sort of pattern yourself after because you can, I think that's going to lead you to those discoveries, right? That, that, that curiosity, that passion, that excitement. Um, you know, Jess and I get talking and like, we're like, like, that's enough to sort of like get us through the next week of work, whatever, oh, yeah. or even longer. Right. <laughs> um, and so, you know, like that's the stuff that you should be really looking for and you should be open to new opportunities. Honestly, Absolutely. you shouldn't try and, you know, you should, you should look for the ways that you want to work and the things that resonate with you and less about the sort of, again, like, again, is, this, do I want to be, you know, do I want to be doing UX UI or do I, specifically do you, what type of work do you want to be doing? Not exactly. just, I want to be a UX designer. I want to be, you know, creating an application for, you know, students to get like scholarships. I want to be creating a, you know, broad a podcasting platform. I want to be like, exactly. like, that's apply design to those problems and less to the mediums themselves. Um, so. And that actually reminds me, I'm going to make a small shout out before we do our artist showcase in a few. Um, you know, we do at Adobe have a lot of really cool things going around. And um, one of which is um, we have what is in the Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund. So for those of you who are, you know, you know, this has been not a kind year for many, right? And it's been limiting and difficult to say the least to really kind of get your career up and going um, or to even just be able to pay the bills, right? And so uh, the community team, uh, the Adobe Live team, everybody who's involved with even putting these kind of shows together, we have this uh, $1 million community fund 
aimed at providing resources for creatives who have been impacted negatively by COVID. And so um, it's running for the rest of this year. You know, if this is something that you think uh, is something that you could definitely benefit from, you know, you can apply for uh, project funding uh, or a commission through Adobe. And there is a selection process that will provide you a one-time grant to pursue this project. And so, you know, definitely if that's something that you think is up your alley, you should take a look. You can go and find it. I think the URL, if somebody could post it, thank you, Val. Uh, there's the link right there so you can learn more about that program. Um, but highly encourage you to take a look and, and take advantage of these kind of programs to really help you out this year uh, and be creative and find your own journey, really. Mm -hmm. I'm also, I was tracking the chat and I can't actually post anything because I was in the incognito window when I did it, but I, I, I did see the request for colors. Uh, and so yes. I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that really quick and post the colors, the hexes for those who are immediately um, interested. Because... I was also going to um, create a library to oh. share. A library. Well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, I love yes, it. Yes. So... Uh... <laughs> So one of the features that we launched at Max was actually a new integration with Creative Cloud Libraries where you can actually take your assets, your global colors, your character styles, and your components, yes. you actually publish them from XD into a Creative Cloud Library. So this is a this is a big update. Again, we've had library support in XD for a while, but you were only able to sort of consume from, from Creative right. Cloud Libraries. And so if yes. you are a Creative Cloud Library user, as I know Val is, of course, and I can't wait to sort of see what she gets up to with these colors, oh, yes. because I'm going to publish these and I'm sure she's going to open them inside of Fresco or Photoshop. So from XD, I can now go and uh, create um, a new library. And again, from this file. And so here, this in this library's sort of manager, I can see all the libraries I have connected to this document inside of XD. And now I'm going to be able to sort of publish a new library from this. And so I'm going to click on publishing and it's going to do its thing. And uh, immediately from here, I'm going to be able to invite my collaborators um, with like, let's just say, I, I don't know if Val Val, I don't, I don't know if you want to, yeah, I don't know if you want to, yeah, I'm going to do Jess, yeah. um, but I'll invite Val as well and actually go in and actually make this uh, public so then other people can come and see this. Yes. So I'm going to invite Jess to this. And um, now Val, when you find, when we get the link to you, then you'll be able to open up this library Absolutely. inside of Photoshop and use all these colors. And we're, we, we actually took this step further as well in XD. I and mean, this is something that's really important when you are sort of managing, you know, a, uh, a design system or a style, a sort of, you know, creative set of styles, you know, for your team, you can actually you now govern updates, which means you can control when the library is updated. And this has never been available in libraries before. If you've used libraries in the past, if you update a color swatch in a library that automatically updates for everyone else um, who is seeing that library and it just happens immediately. There's actually nothing you can do to control that. But now in XD, if I go and I change any of these colors and styles and components, I can mm -hmm. choose when to send that update to everyone else who is accessing that library, collaborating with me around that library, which is um, which is huge, such a huge deal. I'm a uh, I'm getting a kick out of the fact that this is a very meta experience. Before we get to the artist showcase, where <laughs> I read in the chat, uh, you know, because this feature in libraries is so new, and um, you know, we've been working on it for a while, but it it is relative. It just came out two weeks ago for everybody, and so. Um, it's just funny because like when I read the request in chat, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to copy paste these values and <laughs> I pasted it in the chat and I was looking at it as you were showing the library's workflow <laughs> and it was like Neanderthal workflow, like modern day human workflow, Neanderthal workflow. Here you go. Here are some hexes and Talon's like, I'm going to just send you a link just gonna, and it's going to be out of magic. And on top of that, you can govern it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And in fact, <laughs> while we do the artist showcase, I will actually go in and make this accessible to everyone and I will get the link out there to Val so she can post it so everyone can come and yes. uh, and check it out. So. so on that note, let me just take a quick moment to go ahead and share my screen. I shall hit the buttons. And da -da -da. All right. Just... 
All right, so here we are. Um, so for the artist showcase today, we're going to be showcasing a fabulous artist, uh, creator, and UX designer from Poland, uh, Cornel uh, Kazimierzak, I believe, is how you say the last name there. Um, I apologize if I did butcher your last name. And so we're going to take a look a little bit at some of the work that Cornell's done and kind of give some praise and a shout out and just loving the work. So I've actually gone ahead and taken a look at his portfolio. So we've got a lot of really great stuff from the daily challenges. Again, um, you know, something that we do for all the different apps in case you want to get to know and learn the products and, and be uh, and challenge yourself creatively. And then, of course, there's some lovely ones from XD. So I've gone ahead and picked a couple that I think are interesting. So something I noticed about Cornell, because uh, I myself am a person who enjoys video games, is that he does like video games as well. And so, you know, we've talked a lot about auto loop today and just kind of creating that animation. And I wanted to show off one of the first pieces that is very impressive if you think about it in terms of what he's doing, you know, really trying to create a multi uh, state kind of intricate uh, animation, just using uh, artboards and putting it together. Uh, this is from Assassin's Creed, which he took inspiration from. And I just want to actually compare it to the fact that this is the version that he made in XD, <laughs> the loading screen. And then nice. here I looked up a version that was showing like not the per the same one, but I just tried to find one that was similar. But here's the one that you see in the video game, right, basically. And and since then, that game has really kind of uh, uh, evolved itself. But, you know, I just think it's kind of astounding that, you know, you can kind of pull off these sorts of things <laughs> in a design tool. Like mm -hmm. this. So very cool stuff. And uh, definitely I'm impressed by it. I actually have no idea how he did some of it, but yeah, it's wondrous. Love it. So very nice. cool design there. Um, I'm going to close that out. So Talon, Mr. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. here with Sparkler into, uh, you know, Comet into XD. Uh, this is an Adobe XD redesign concept, which I always, oh, man, if I could just look at redesign concepts <laughs> today. I know a lot of people in the design community, it's, it's kind of a, uh, it's a subject that's very polarizing, if you mm -hmm, will. Mm -hmm. You've got people who love the redesign concept projects out there, and then you've got people who are like, bah. Um, but I always like seeing them, especially when they're the Me stuff too. that we're working on. And so, uh, again, that gamer coming out with his Pokemon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nod. But here is Adobe XD redesigned. Look at that. In dark mode. All in dark uh, mode. In dark I did mode, not. not yes. Windows, right, is what I'm seeing And Windows here. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Windows version. Yep. Uh, new properties panel, more new features, properties. very cool. More yes. Pathfinder, Align, yes. Distribute, Database, CSV, File Support, Redesign, Color Picker, and Layout panel. That Color Picker has gone through a lot in a, in XD's life. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it has. A lot of little things. Actually, Remember? Th this, uh, this is really fascinating because uh, we did definitely consider a lot of different, oh, yeah. um, different, different Color Pickers, yeah. So it's, it's great to see this work, to see these mm -hmm. ideas that are put out there. New artboard panels, redesign layers, New redesign layers. Interesting. You don't say. You don't say. <laughs> we are thinking about these things. Yes. Custom easing, also things that we're thinking yes. about. New trigger yes. options. Yes. Mm -hmm. New trigger mm -hmm. options. Actually, so that's, <laughs> we. the team is actually actively looking at a lot of these things. Let's yeah. see. New triggers, including, I should screenshot this and send it to them. Double yep. tap, touch All down, touch up, long press, fling, pull, chain, range, detect, tilt, compass, 3D transformer, proximity, and custom easing curves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I see some feature requests? Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> this feels very Star Wars almost, like very intergalactic. <laughs> Very good to Wait, our With theme. 3D transform too. With 3D transform. <laughs> yes. The yes. long awaited timeline and more. I love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You should do our marketing stuff. Pages, setting windows, dark theme, dark new theme, responses, of course. increased canvas size, MP4, GIF and file support. New. Uh, you, you know what, <laughs> Cornell? You're gonna really like 2021. You're gonna I like won't it. say I won't say why. I'll just mysteriously say that you'll enjoy 2021. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's really interesting about this too, which I think brings up a um, kind of interesting point about sort of all the panels kind of laid out is, and this is, just, I sort of bring it up because I think it's one of the things that we, we've, we've thought we think a lot about in XD mm -hmm. in terms of it comes to like that choreographed experience. You know, if you're a pro, right. And you, you've established your workflow and you've learned it through, um, you know, a lot of time and effort, right. You've, 
you're like, are you, especially inside of Photoshop or Illustrator, you've gone in there and you figured out how to make Photoshop and Illustrator work for you. And so when you are a pro, you know, customizing that layout and, and allowing for kind of all that power sort of at your fingertips is, is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And, and, but it's unique, it's unique to you. It's unique to kind of, again, how you've learned to kind of put together all the features. And I think there in which is kind of like the big sort of the big leap for, for new users or users who, who maybe haven't invested as much time to sort of think about like how all the pieces fit together. And so, you know, I, I think customization is an important part of kind of the, the, the sort of Adobe landscape when it comes to tooling. But one of the approaches we really wanted to take with XD, which is, all right, so in, in Illustrator, I have to, you know, an action, like say like repeat grid, um, or something else might, you know, I have to, I can do it. I can do something like it, mm -hmm. but again, it takes me, you know, I have to understand how to put all these different features together and have these panels and these options available to me, um, you know, kind of, you know, when I need them and I might not use them all the time. And, and that kind of gets at the thing that really gets me excited about UI design in particular is really thinking about, you know, how to orchestrate someone's actions kind of using and kind of, um, you know, kind of a kind of a, a an experience you know like like a right. like a panel ui like yeah. here like th th this 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 appearance it's really powerful there's a lot of features available to me mm -hmm. the question is is like am i using them all like at the same time which ones mm -hmm. do i use more often than others mm -hmm. which ones do i want which ones am i say like changing all the time versus changing only some of the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of some of the, 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 the motivation behind kind of our arrangement and how we think about and, and uh, UI and kind of the options that are available to you. Um, you know, when do you need that feature? When do you need the color picker? When do you need the eyedropper? When do you mm -hmm. need these features? And then, again, when, and then when sometimes you might need them all the time. Some of the things you might need some of the time and some things you might need very rarely. And so yep. that's how we think about like how a lot of this UI is sort of arranged and available. And of course, all that being said, I think there is a dream of having like fully customizable layouts at some point in the future. All the things. So that, that you can, <laughs> again, you the pro can then can take that and customize it to your needs, so exactly. your workflows, um, which is of course is a big leg part of the legacy of Adobe. So. Yep, no, 100%. And so, you know, it's fit, it's always fun watching these kind of pieces and really kind of thinking through it. You can tell with Cornell's work, especially that, you know, there's a lot of love uh, in terms of thinking through what what do I need as a pro user? How can I really mm -hmm. achieve those things? And so, you know, the, the execution aside, which is also um, awesome to see, by mm -hmm. the way, and great job, Cornell, on this. I would say, like, what I love, uh, I'm on the camp of I love seeing the redesigns, um, you know, because what it really shows is kind of that person's commentary, the, the depth of thinking, if you will, their love for and the intimacy they have around like understanding something and, yeah. and really trying to connect with those those user goals. And so um, so it's a delight to always look at yeah. these. Yeah. Like, so, like seeing this Cornell, I can, I can really see, like I can start to say like, okay, well actually maybe that thing's more important than, than <laughs> another thing. Maybe, you know, exactly. like this is a great way for us to sort of step back from our work and examine it uh, and really try and glean from it again, like like you're making very intentional decisions and yes. kind of think about why, like, why are you making those intentional decisions? And, and I, yes. I, you know, I think I can only get us a little of that from glean, you glean a little bit of that <laughs> from just sort of seeing it without talking directly to you, which would be kind of cool at some point. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, some, some great stuff here. Some, again, just mentioned some stuff that I think you're going to be really excited about, um, you know, in the coming year. So. And then I will just jump to one more thing, which is, uh, you know, Cornell did this work that I absolutely, it's kind of unusual, which is why I wanted to point it out and why I love it so much is, um, you don't often see in portfolios nowadays, something as simple as this, which is to me, two things. One is it's a commentary on a recent trend, which shows me that, you know, he's plugged in, you know, understands it, you know, is paying attention and is really kind of involved, involved in that and thinking about how that factors into you know, his process. And then specifically, it's just so simply executed. And it's really just nice. Like I, you know, you're usually looking at like long workflows and like prototypes and all that jazz, which is really great too. But, um, but I did pause when I saw this one. And I was like, wow, you don't really see that anymore. And it's really nice um, to kind of look at that and, the, and well executed, it shows that, you know, he's definitely got a grasp of understanding how to execute on some of these things, but how to also do it so um, as it relates to trends, which is really fun. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, often in a often in post, you'd only see like one of those being displayed, right? Exactly. So seeing the context and seeing kind of the depth and the, the thinking that went in there to kind of diagram this out and mm -hmm. dissect it. Yeah, it's really nice. 
Yeah, so that's pretty much it for uh, some of the th things that we'll go and look at. Please check out Cornell's work. Really beautiful job. Um, really, thank you for letting us take a look at that and such. And uh, and and yeah, so Talon, I think we've got a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Yeah, a little yes. bit of time. To maybe look Here, at your work. Yeah. Here's a question. For, here's a question for you that I the, in the chat. So so what if you were to see like someone with a really great idea out there in the community, like. How would you approach that? You know, Jess, like how would you sort of connect that back to the team? You know, how would you think about, um, you know, like, like, again, like what that was telling you that the user is prioritizing? Like, how do you approach something like that when you see a great feature and an idea out there in the world and say, like, oh, that's really great, you know? Um, well, yeah. what, you know, that reminds me actually of something I love, love, love uh, about user voice, which is where we have a lot of the feedback coming from the community. Um, I, I love it when someone actually posts a, like a example, like a wireframe, like, you know, there's only so much you can do to express what you're trying to convey with words and, um, and typing or even in these kind of conversations. So when you do see actually someone bring it to life and kind of take it to the next, I'm not saying everybody go and design things, but you know, when you do see that, you're like, oh, interesting. Like this is kind of how you, it's almost literally like in that other person's shoes, like right? seeing how they might use a, a tool, which is really cool. Um, obviously, we're very involved on all the different mediums, whether it be uh, Discord or Twitter and such. But yeah, I mean, we're always listening. I literally mm -hmm. copy pasted some of the feedback from this chat into your canvas, by the way, <laughs> for us to follow up with our team on. Yes. Um, so, yes. Right so, there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Zilla. <laughs> Zilla was saying, yes, I, I saw this one. <laughs> Widget flips for iOS 14. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Zilla, I have a file on that. It's not um, It's not perfect. But I actually, when I, the minute I saw that, that widget flip, I was like, that's 3D transform. Right there. <laughs> and I do have, I do have a, a, a sort of rough version of that. That's a great idea. All actually, right. you know what, Zilla, we'll do it tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do, we'll do that little widget flip here in this section right here in yes. the keep lessening section. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to riff on that a little bit right now, right now. So, yeah. Well, so maybe for we could do a quick recap of what we've done today, talk a little bit about some of the things that we're planning for tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, so right, if you're just kind of joining in, right, we were, we were inspired today to create a galactic space cats application, a podcast listening application, uh, you know, based on inspired by the Midnight Gospel, which I expect you all to go watch an episode of tonight and come back. <laughs> And we'll talk some more about it tomorrow. I'm going to take some notes and we're going to have some fun with that tomorrow. And uh, we are creating that. Again, we were sort of you know inspired by the styling of the UI elements there. We've created a few things here inside of XD. We didn't design all of this today in XD, but I did, I did it a little bit of on the, on the side kind of before the stream. So that we were kind of riffing on that. We were establishing some of our sort of dominant colors, uh, global colors and character styles. And we started to create our dashboard for our uh, for discovering all the amazing space casts that are sort of being beamed to us from all over the galaxy directly to us here on Earth. And so we, uh, we kind of played around with that. We looked at um, utilizing scrollable groups here on this dashboard, again, we, we have a lot of different sections I want to be exploring. And so we we used uh, horizontal and vertical scrolling groups. We also, of course, used Repeat Grid to uh, quickly design out and customize all of these Look sections here. Look at those here. titles. Look at those lovely sims and farmers. I love the puns. I know, the this, this simulation so farm. Good. Yes, yes. And then, um, of course, we also use some auto animate to design and, and also components with states to design this great little hover interaction oh, yes. here for our transmission signal so we can kind of see what's going on see where all these transmissions are coming in from possibly maybe that's a way we can maybe follow tomorrow mm. so we have a little little component with a hover action here with some auto animate going on we also of course we're creating multiple flows um here in the document we have of course our ipad flow which is going to be our kind of main flow but we quickly showed off uh, some of the scrolling behaviors with an iPhone flow. And then we showed kind of a looping animation solution because it kind of came up in the chat today. Oh, yes. That we created that here. Ooh. Yes. Mesmerizing. Mesmerizing. <laughs> uh, yes. So that is what we were up to today. Tomorrow, we are going to get a little deeper in a 3D transform because I had kind of a crazy idea. Um, Again, I was thinking about, of course, podcasts we listen to, and of course, we kind of interact with it sort of solely through, you know, audio. 
But what if we were to interact with the content uh, that we were being beamed to us from other places, actually out in the real world? What would that look like? What would that experience look like, possibly? Um, so without yes. maybe giving too much away, we are definitely going to be using some 3D transform tomorrow. We're going to be thinking about la la. sort of breaking out of the screen a little bit, maybe out there into the real world and maybe using 3D transform to start, help, to start, help us start to visualize yes. uh, what that experience might look like. And you had mentioned right before we did the artist showcase a little bit of library magic because some folks yes, in right. the chat wanted some of your fantastic color palettes and I barbarically posted the hexes in the channel <laughs> as you were demonstrating uh, the link. So where are we at with that? Mm -hmm. So we have a library and I um, actually, actually uh, Val, I think might be able to post it for us. I actually created a library from the Ooh. assets panel inside of XD. So I, I took all of our colors here and our character styles and the component, and I actually made it available for all of you to go check out, to open up and use in Photoshop or in XD itself. Um, and you know, I, uh, I sent the link over to Val so she can uh, share it out if, uh, if she can. And all of you can go and actually view the link. So let's actually go and check it out right now. because I think I can just click on this link. Copy that link. And then we're going to go and let me just pull it up here. And someone was asked, or Val was asking, what is the official title of this app? Is the official title Talon Spacecast? Yeah. Um, okay. I, I think so. I think so. Uh, there it is. I might change that a little bit. So here is, here is that library right here. You all can go check it out, use it yourself. And what's great about this is if we, if we riff on it tomorrow and we update anything, I'll be able to actually publish all those updates all, you know, out there to all of you and oh you can goodness. design along with us. I can't believe I'm still not over the fact that we have this ability to do this so simply and we did it so quickly within the span of time um, because this is exactly what folks were looking for, which mm -hmm, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And these colors are beautiful. Um, oh yeah, there's Midnight Cosplayer. So we've yes. got only got like a few more minutes left before uh, the show ends. And so just a quick reminder again, um, after us at 2.30 Pacific time, um, you please join Andrew and Simonin for Designing in the Dark, in which they will be creating some lettering pieces based off of suggestions from the chat. So if you all want to see and be involved with creating some lovely lettering work, um, definitely go and tune in on that. Um, tomorrow we'll also be here, same time of day, from 12 to 2 Pacific, and we are going to be finishing what is in a galactic podcast app based off of uh, Midnight Gospel that Talon has been so wonderfully designing. And we're also going to be leveraging a couple other fun stuff. Um, we'll also be uh, doing a little bit of a review on the daily creative challenge as well. So if you're not familiar with the Discord channel, take a look at the Discord channel. We have one for XD where we post these challenges. And so uh, definitely join in if you can. We love seeing the work, providing some feedback, sharing some thoughts, and just seeing what you do in XD. It's honestly mm. one of the, the coolest Best parts thing. of this Seriously. gig, right? <laughs> it's just being Seriously. blown away at what people can do, kind of like Cornell, right, in that animation and all that kind of stuff. It's just wonderful work. So mm, Yes, it is. So yeah, and then if you have any questions, again, you know, Tal and I, we both work on XD. We are always um, not only looking for feedback and suggestions on what to look at for the product, but also we love to share the stories that we have. Talon's lovely story today around his origin. <laughs> what is his origin story? Origin story. It's Tomorrow we'll, we need to cover designer. Jess's origin story <laughs> as well. My origin story is not as exciting as yours, but I'd be happy to oblige. It's, uh, no, it's good. No, she, <laughs> understate, understated yet, yet again. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> but yeah, and so uh, so tune in for tomorrow. Uh, we'll definitely finish up this app. We will be putting more of these pieces together. We'll definitely be looking at um, some creative challenges and then just kind of sitting around and chatting all things design and philosophy, if you will. So mm -hmm. thank you today for joining. And yeah, we hope to all. see you again tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>